What's going on, baby? Happy Sunday. Welcome to the Sooner or Later Sports Show. I am your host, Jay. Thank y'all for pulling up here on the YouTube channel and listening wherever podcasts are downloaded and uh, listen to while you're here. Please wipe your feet, like, subscribe, great review. Give us five stars. You don't think you deserve it. Give us five anyway and gift it. So we've got a lot of fun stuff to talk about here on the show. Of course, Coop is in the house. Coop, what's going on? Yeah, it feels like we got a lot of a lot of um hopefully good things happening. <laughs> right? Um we had a commitment that came down on Saturday during this Heisman hangout event. We've got some good stuff coming. Yeah, am I am I too quiet? Can y'all not hear me? Am I low? It may be me. It may be me. I don't know. We got a lot of stuff going on. We've got uh, like I said, we got the uh commitment from Wembley out of Arkansas. We've got, uh, yeah, Coop looks like your mic is low, but I can hear you fine. And we've got the Heisen Hangout event to talk about. I think we've got an incoming commitment coming out of line. So something else to be excited about. I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah, we've got like so a busy week in the commitment world. So we've got to talk about that. we got to talk about what Oklahoma looks like they're doing. And uh, yeah, get back excited. So Coop. I know you. We were talking about it, you know, in the green room, and we talked about it in text around uh, Wimberley. Man, talk to me. How you feel about that pickup? Because to me, I think it's a big one. I think it's a really good deal. I mean, yeah, I mean, you go into Arkansas and you pull away two. Uh, I guess the two top safeties, two top players in the state. I mean, doing one of those is is something. Doing two of them is. I mean, it, it's Brandon Hall. Like that's what, you, what you, we can pretty much say is let's go ahead and say that right now um, Emma Jones could done can do whatever he wants uh, <laughs> pretty much whatever he wants and then Dave uh, let's, go with, <laughs> let's go with Valai too with a whatever he wants and so yeah I mean I, I it's it's great the size is phenomenal he's got uh, I mean he's a guy that can play in the you know in the two twenties uh, I mean he's looking at the one ninety area six one right now so I mean. That's great. I and mean, you know, you love what he said about Oklahoma because it's not just like, hey, some some you know really good program offered me and I'm just gonna take him up on it. He said, you know, I- I'm in love with Oklahoma. So I mean, you hear that and that's that's what you want to hear. That's why we have the soul mission. That's why we have things set up the way that you have. I mean, think about this right now, Jay. You go out to practice and you don't have your your stars, you know, rocking uh, you know, rocking the NIL deals and just sitting out and watching. Our stars are out there coaching. You know, you hear all week uh, and all during spring yeah. that Billy Bowman's out there. You hear that Danny Stutzman's out there uh, coaching them up. That I mean, that's exactly what you want to hear. So, uh, too bad we don't have a couple of senior booking uh, tackles that uh, could be coaching up the offensive line. But um, you know, someday, someday that that that's coming down the line. So, uh, Marcus Wimberly, uh, safety out of uh, out of Arkansas, he is uh, he is going to be a thumper. He is going to um, be that lunch pail guy. That uh, you know, that's a cliche, but uh, you, you look at the order, <laughs> you, you know, the offers. With Oklahoma and Michigan, Wisconsin, Utah, Alabama, I mean, you follow the offers. Um, stars are what stars are, but follow the offers. Because, I mean, you and I have made comments before that you could be a five-star guy and choose a, you know, a program over, let's go with a, a five-star, you know, defensive back choosing an Oklahoma mm-hmm. or a four-star defensive back choosing Oklahoma over an Alabama or a Georgia. I think in the past when we get those guys, those guys – not necessarily were dogs who came in and decided they want to come take someone's job. I, I you know, in, in, in the past, it kind of felt like maybe they chose Oklahoma because they didn't want to go compete with the other dudes at, at, at Alabama. Um, so I'll, I'll say it again. You, you, if you're a safety or a defensive back, you have to be a dude and you have to be uh, of that dog mentality and willing to come in and take it. And so um, you, you see the attitude of Wimberley and I, I see nothing wrong here. Yeah, no, I think it was a good pickup because, like you said, we took somebody out of Arkansas that Arkansas really wanted, right? The big thing with him at his frame, you know, the 6'1", 200-something pounds, there's a high school senior. 
I mentioned it in, in the commitment video. The man, we, we got video. We have like video footage and evidence of him throwing up 315 like six six or seven times, right? We've got video footage of him squatting 405 pounds like eight times. We've got footage of him jumping a 38-inch plus vertical leap. So all of this stuff, power cleaning, 285 pounds, we have video evidence of him doing this on his expert account. So we can see that he is someone that probably is a little underrated just because of where he plays. Granite plays, what, 4A Arkansas football? whoop de doo If you're a baller, you're a baller. That's all that matters. And as you mentioned, Brennan Hall is looking for those thumpers, man. I think, I think honestly, when I, when, when, when I think about the hitters, I think about going into the Peyton Bowen recruitment, bringing him in, bringing in uh, Jaden Hardy, and then you go get Reggie Powers and you start seeing Reggie Powers and his highlight video of just hitting people. And then you start going out. He plays multiple positions, just as Mike had made mention there. He was on the offensive side. He was, he's, he was listed as an athlete, but he's going to play safety. And so I, he rushed for over 1,300 yards combined. Well, he had over 1,300 yards of combined offense, like 15 rushing touchdowns. The dude just does – he did everything for the school. So he's one of those players that do just does it all. It's kind of like you think about like a Terry Bussey. The difference is, is that Bussey is there down in Texas, right, in Tipton, Texas. So, of course, he's going to get a lot more accolades because he's just dominating Texas football. But I think Wimberley – is not it's not gonna it's not gonna be when you see him out there on the field and you see his size and stature you won't be surprised that he's a sooner right we're getting dudes that are physically imposing and I love that and Coop goes to your favorite person the Crimson Missile Lewis Carter right when you get dudes that are just weight room monsters dudes that eat the weights for lunch yeah th this is what Wimberley brings to what Oklahoma is trying to do and so I'm excited to see that we're going after freakishly athletic dudes. And this makes me think about um, I forgot who I was texting with, but this really makes me think back to the John Blake era of Oklahoma, where you would bring in a whole bunch of like um, just athletes and then you got to figure out where to play them. And it felt it feels like Stoops is going to take all of these athletes and really start putting them in the places that we want them to be at. Like, yeah. What, all you got to do is get out there. And he, and he runs an actual 4-4 and just as uh, – Pops Powers over here, Rich Powers Jr. popped in here. Pops is telling us he really athletic dude that uh, that you know he can play. His rank is going to shoot up based on the competition he's got. The good thing is is that he can ball. So of course I'm excited to see what we get out of him, and, and that's a good thing. We started off strong with the commitment. Now it's all about. Who we impressed. And the good thing is, is this weekend I heard that we did a really good job. So please, you know, let me know what y'all think about Wimberly. Hop in the comments. Let us know your thoughts. Um, make sure you like, subscribe, rate, review, and all that jazz if you're listening. So next up, Coop. Heisman Hangout. It was mentioned here in the comments. And I loved, I want to point this out specifically. Let me grab it. Y'all can see I'm traveling. So I'm doing everything from a tablet as well as a phone. But the beauty of it is technology nowadays allows for us to do that. Kim, you were the one to point this out. Thank you, Kim, for saying this. Sam Bradford was here. He was. We got picture evidence that Sam Bradford has made his valiant return to Oklahoma. <laughs> we Nobody can lie to you and say what. Nope. Oh, you tweeted it out. And I saved the picture because I put it as the tag for the video I put up earlier today about this event. Cool. This was basic. It feels like this was kind of an impromptu event. Not something that was fully planned initially. We brought in Joel Alley. She came in as a new director of recruiting uh, or whatnot. She's putting together all these events. And hearing from parents, this is a fantastic event. And everybody loved it. Bringing the Heisman Trophy winners. Bringing in, right, you know, I mean, you, you can see Sam and DeMarco Murray together. Makes you think about 2008. Saddens you, right? Just kind of gets you a little depressed because if DeMarco didn't get hurt, <laughs> that's a title. It's okay. It happens. And then, of course, BYU knocks us out the next year. I was at that game at Jerry's Circus. I'm still a little hurt from that, but I digress. Coop, we bring in a whole bunch of players. And so going down the line, defensively, defensive dude, there's a lot of defensive dudes that I noticed. What what did you get out of this event? Um, I, You got to look at – just the fact that it wasn't just a bunch of dudes from Texas and Oklahoma coming. I mean, they had guys from, you know, Georgia and, and Virginia and I mean, just way, way out there. I mean, so that's, 
I mean, that's crazy. And then also the list continued to grow more and more and more. And they were getting other people showing up, which, you know, obviously is never a bad thing. So, um, but yeah, uh, you, you know, you're starting to hear a little bit about uh, a couple of commitments and uh, full disclosure. If you if you tag me on anything on Twitter, I've been uh, I've been booted out of Twitter by the uh, by the suspicious uh, suspicious uh, activity bot or whatever. So I cannot go in and look at anything. So I am you know doing everything, and of course uh, you know Elon ain't answering my text messages. So uh, we got to wait uh, until I get back in there. But a um, lot a of, lot of a uh, lot of notes coming back and forth um, about. Uh, you know, surprise visitors last second, silent commitments. Um, but when you have the, the Heisman hangout like this, um, you know, you've already got on your, you know, in and around your program, just a phenomenal amount of guys who did it at the highest level in college. Is, is it yeah. still working? Is it still, I'm still low? Yeah, some people are starting to sound, say that you're a little low. But up, uh, up, uh, uh, camera failed this time. He's going to turn his mic up. I'm, I'm trying everything I can. Here's this only. Is this any better at all? There he goes. Is that better, yeah. y'all? Can y'all hear him? Yeah. I don't. I can hear. He sounds crystal clear to me. So that's that's. I think that's the bad part. But, um, but yeah, right. you said you said you're very loud. Yeah, yeah. You, you speak yeah, up a little just, bit. Let's go turn it up. There's just. Uh, I'm gonna be screaming. My neighbor's gonna come over. Um, but yeah, no. It, it, that's. I mean, whenever you can bring people from all over the place, have the phenomenal talent and, and just the, uh, the, the assets that you have between the soul mission guys like Sam Bradford coming back in, you know, that's uh, I mean, that's always just uh, you know, a, a great piece. So um, again, guys, more and more people get the chance to see what this, um, see what this, uh, this coaching staff looks like, what it, what it means for their children and so when parents come and they 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 love the uh, they love everything, that, I mean that's never bad, right? And so because that's mm -hmm. who you got to get in there, um, because number one is I think that even though the NIL can get uh, that 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 whole play can get hijacked by parents at times, I, I mm -hmm. fully believe fully fully believe that the thing that deters that in in a lot of cases is is this situation. It is the family environment. It's what our staff does it's what they offer because you know we are not going to outbid everybody that's i mean we we have we have beat that one down but um we will go in and we will let the parents know that your kids are going to become better kids they're not going to be one of 95 people who are um who are uh you know knocking on the door for nil they're not going right. to become people who are i don't know racing around the uh racing around their college campus in that area so um Nothing, nothing bad. Like I said, there's nothing bad to see here. It is, uh, it is a family environment with a lot of uh, a, lo a lot of people getting excited. Yeah, that, that's the good thing is a lot of the players, like Wimberly mentioned about the culture coming here. He was excited about that. I've seen from you know uh, Tor uh, Tory Blaylock said the same thing, and so you get a running back commitment comes in from Tory. You talk about you know Wimberly says the same thing. It, it's, it seems to be the uh theme here and i'm gonna be honest man this is you know me keeping it a buck when it comes to coaching at the collegiate level with all the changes you gotta want to be here right and we're starting to see that which coaches truly care about being here coaching teaching these kids being leaders of men that they always claim that they are it feels like we're getting to that point. We're getting to the point where Oklahoma is all these coaches and staff are showing that. So, but outside of that, man, so I know that we had a big group of corners in. You had um, Malik Hawkins. You had, um, they go from Malik Hawkins to Kobe Sellers to Cortland Guillory. You had, Seton, uh, Satana Stewart, another corn at Ohio. There's a uh, there's a growing thing. That room feels like it's gonna end up being full quick, right? We only got one. We we have what? No corner commitment so far, and I'm sensing that somebody's gonna go ahead and pop off. I mean, Wednesday we've got Malik Hawkins, which that's been a heavy Oklahoma lean, and then we got another one on that one. We'll talk about the line in a minute, but. Cool. When you're looking at these corners, man, 
who who gonna come in here and take this job? Who who, who wants to be here? Who, who we think gonna be there? Let's go with this. Um, I, I mean, do we want do we want to just? I mean, start calling out rumors at this point, or yeah, no, nah, 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 we, so, we won't we won't jump on on the rumors yet. I mean, I know okay. you've heard what I've heard, so but we won't we won't jump on those yet. We we'll let those come to fruition. I put it like this: once crystal balls start falling, then y'all understand what we say when it comes about uh, rumors. Yeah, I mean, so with. Um, with some of the people that are out there, I, I personally like, okay, so let's just go with Wimberly. Wimberly is not a five-star guy and Wim Wimberly is not saying, um, I, I mean, I don't think that with the Wimberly situation, that doesn't mean that we're not taking someone else. So remember right. that as we're going after some of these guys, these, these athletes, these corners, just think about the guys that we have on campus right now, because a lot of the stuff that we have on right now, a lot of these guys are, are, are these mutant freaks who can play, you know, outside linebacker. They can play cheetah. They can play safety. They can play defensive back. And I, and I say, and I say this is Brent Venables is going to continue to make this defense. A bunch of guys who can tackle the run and defend the pass. Both. You can't, you can't be a, a, a Deion Sanders, no offense to prime, but we all know that when it came time to business decision, Dion was going to Olay and let a safety take up for him. Like he was not <laughs> making tackles. And and in, in this world, I think Dion Sanders has a much much uh, you know much much more issues nowadays because I think people would have ran and made him tackle. And so, um, fair point. You got that. But you, you look at all these athletes. I mean, when it it, it makes me extremely happy. It, it makes me absolutely because I think that uh, I mean, if you read the tea leaves, Malik Hawkins you know, it is a guy who is going to be a Sooner uh, between the family, uh, the legacy aspect of it. Brother's already on campus. Yep. There we go, right? Um, you've got Solers and Gilroy, uh, Guillory. Um, the, these guys and, and, and Wimberly, all these guys, I, I want them all. I want them all. I have them all show up because, again, uh, Cream is going to rise to the top, and we got to get used to this because you're going to lose guys that you could not wait to see play. It's going to kill me to ever see somebody like, um, yeah, I don't know, like a Lewis Carter. A Lewis Carter were to up and leave. Like, that would physically hurt me. But I don't think that that situation is going to happen with him specifically. But we are going to get most of these guys coming on campus. And you just hope to God that they all turn out to ballers and we can play them all. But numbers yeah. don't lie. That ain't going to happen. When you're going to have a guy who comes in as a freshman and is already turning heads, and when he's getting praise from coaching staff and he's hearing and he's seeing social media and everybody's pumping him up, that has a lot to do with how people transfer out too. But every single one of these guys are going to come in and compete and actually be you know, potential stars in the defensive backfield. So uh, if you can take them all, let's take them all and deal with the numbers down the road. But – if you get a, a few of them, I mean, I don't see a combination between Hawkins, uh, Guillory, Sellers, uh, Merritt, Wimberly that you go. And eh, I really don't like that combination. We we can have all of them. Let's let's have them all. Is that Pokemon? Got to collect them all. <laughs> Got to right. catch them all, man. Yeah, that's definitely uh, the Pokemon statement. So no, and I sense that that's what we're gonna go with. We're gonna get as many of these good players that we possibly can, and. Um, you know, of course, you know, that's, you know, the cliche and just a simple way of saying it. We're going to go after all the guys. But the good thing is, defensive line-wise, I know that we uh, definitely are in the running heavily for the elite tackle in, in Trent Wilson, top um, top 150 player in the country, one of the top 15 defensive linemen out there out of Maryland. He's, he's rising. rising. Yeah, he's yeah. definitely rising up the ranks, too. And so he commits on Wednesday as well. So you have Malik Hawkins in the morning. I think he's at 12 o'clock Central. Then you have uh, Trent, which commits at, like, uh, I think 630 Eastern, 530 Central. I'm sensing we, 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 can, we can go for a twofer, right? With all the crystal balls, it feels like it's just something to may as well say is going to happen. Ready just to go ahead and hit that done button? We we good. We 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 just going. All right. Who yeah. says we're going to do that? We're going to do that then. Two for two, baby. Two for two. Let's make it happen. I'm all for the two for twos. Let's go for that. All right. Um, 
Let's talk about practice. Let's talk about practice, man. And uh, I think practice, game. not a game. We're talking about practice. Not a game. Shout out to Mike. Appreciate the $2 on the super. Jane Jackson, I hear, is playing like a beast. So it sounds like Jane Jackson. I said Jane Jackson, Reggie Powers, probably the two on the defensive side I've heard the most about. Because, yeah, they balling. Cool. Who else you hearing about on the freshman? A freshman on both sides of the ball that seems to be doing something. Well, let me clarify, clarify something on Jaden. We did not want to be in spot to where we had two true freshmen leading the defensive line into the SEC. That's not what we wanted. And so nope. don't look at Jaden Jackson – being praised as in nobody else can do a damn thing. And this dude's just, he's the only one with, you know, anything to offer guys. Mm -hmm. He is playing better than better. I mean, he is playing at or better than Dejon Terry. He is beating guys. We have on campus. Yep. Guys, we knew this and was going to happen. We knew we said, this was, we said happen. it, we did. And, and it is not, it is 100% not. David Stone and Jaden Jackson just being put in because it's the wave of the future and let's go with the young guys. Like a lot of people want to say, hey, if the vet sucks, let's play the young guy. At least it's at least we get more sucky. We we saw that on defense for the past decade, kids. We saw that. We saw an absolute uh we no no no, Mike, you're you're good. I'm not I'm not taking any shots. I'm I'm just clarifying. Jaden Jackson is playing like a like a junior, like a redshirt sophomore going into his third year. He is strong. He has violent hands. He knows how to use multiple different assets on his body. So when you hear of guys like who have been on campus for a few years or potentially five stars from last year, and you're like, when is that? When are they going to start making their push? When are they going to get it in there? Um, and, and, you know, really start showing out. It, it's when you use how to. It's when you learn the, the 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 idiosyncrasies of the position. That's why Bates is there. That's why Chavis is there. Is to teach them not how to use their immense talent and that God given athletic ability, but is doing the tiny things. How to use your hands. How to have violent hands. When you hear Gabe talk about it with the offensive lineman, same thing. You got to learn how to the, the little bitty things, and that's what Beatenbow tries to teach. And if you just want to say, "Well, I'm really strong." I got good feet. I'm just going to stay in front of the defender. No, that's not how it is. So, <laughs> Jaden Jackson is an absolute freak. And Stone is right behind him. And so, if we see a lot of them, that does not mean that the guys that we have on campus just did not do anything. They didn't make a jump. It just means these two kids are really good. And when you hear Reggie Powers, Reggie Powers, we knew, we knew this. We knew he was going to ball out. Eli Bowen knew he was going to ball out, right? Which is crazy, man, because because Eli honestly was yeah. probably the better defender on that team. Um, it didn't. Geyer, even with his brother there, like people raved up about him as a junior. And so uh, right before even Peyton got there. So, hey, man, there's a good chance that uh, – I mean, he's a sophomore at that point. There's a good chance Eli can come in here and, 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 and wreck some habit. The big thing is, I mean, he, of course, he's shorter. He's a shorter corner, but those shorter ones are usually the ones that are more scrappy. They're ready to fight. Uh, they've been fighting their whole lives. So <laughs> you prepare yourself for that. But no, I mean, you made a good point with how, you know, we're seeing the young guys and it doesn't really mean much, uh, nothing to be afraid of. It's just that they're good. And I know Terry has been coaching up Jackson. They said uh, DJ has been, he's been kind of in and out, but, you know, they're keeping him healthy and he's been coaching the young guys up, which is a plus. You're seeing uh, G Baby out there getting some good run. Yeah. He's showing us that he's ready to play uh, you you're, you're seeing and so you got g baby you got um i think uh champ sanders is actually getting some good some good reps too so, so bv has been raving about him so moving into the linebacker spot man and mike pointed this out which i appreciate him pointing this out here bv mentioned this as well then of course reports that ali has basically been let loose to run the defense and everybody looks to him for answers Telling me everything I need to know. Venables has really stepped back like this and said, you know what? Do your thing. I think we're in an even better spot than we were before because that was the one thing I think Dabo did very well at 
Clemson when Venables was there is he let the defense do their things, let the OC do their thing. He stepped back and he just oversaw all of it to make sure he had last he had veto power at the end of the day. Even same thing with Saban. Saban had veto power at the end of the day, but he let his coaches do their jobs. And when you bring in young elite type of a coordinators or, you know, either young ones or just elite ones or ones with a lot of experience that know how to adjust. The best thing about Latrell is that he was a former head coach. So he's made those mistakes. He knows how to fix and adjust things. That's a good thing. So now BV can go from the linebackers to the safeties to the cheetahs. He can go hang out with the defensive line. He can go talk to the O-line. He's now that CEO role. But hearing about Allie, hey, man, I'm sold. I'm sold on what we're doing yeah. here. Well, you number one, Brent Venables didn't have a um, didn't have a headset on anymore. He's walking around actually doing the head coach job. So no headset means that he not only is stepping away because I think he still try to do all that stuff with the headset on, but he's walking around and doing all this stuff and just letting Allie run. And so I, I fully believe that. Between Kip and Danny and Canick and Allie, you've got enough of, you know, you got, you got, I mean, you've got enough experience out there. And so it is, it's turning into this deal to where one, once again, like I said, with Danny being over to the side, not smoking a cigar or anything, but he is out to the side, you know, staying healthy, but you're seeing the simplification and you know, Jay, sometimes you may be much better at explaining something than I do. And we got the same experience around it. And right. sometimes that, that it just is what it is. You just are better at explaining stuff. But sometimes as people, we just need another dude to tell us the same damn thing that everybody else already told us. And then it all of a sudden clicks because it's somebody different. So when you've got no comment on that last uh, quote, but um, <laughs> when you've got Stutzman, Canick, Kobe McKenzie, Kip Lewis, that is your that that's your pillar by pillar by pillar for your linebacker core. Now you also have Desan, and he's running some of that outside. That I, you know, I heard a little bit of him running some Sam. Um, heard him running a couple other things. He's running so, Will. He was uh, running Will. He was running Will too. I know he okay. he mentioned himself he was running Will on one of the interviews I saw not too long ago, which that got me interested. It l- listen. When you got a humongous athletic freak out there on your defense and you're Indiana, you just say, go do your thing, pal. Go do it. Because the other 10 guys, they are what they are. No offense, Indiana. We love you, right? Uh, it is what it is. Come to Oklahoma, and Brent Venables is your head coach. And you look across, and you've got – Stutzman, who's going to be a high draft pick. You've got Kip Lewis, who people are like, he's 10 pounds away from being a freak of nature. You got Kobe, who's saying like he could start on 10 other SEC teams. And then you got Kanik, who everybody is expecting, led by my my buddy here, that Kanik is going to have the second year jump that Stutzman had last year. Guys, I, I just I just fully feel that there's a chance that we look at this linebacker core this year. And we don't understand what we're watching because everybody's got it. Everybody knows the defense. Everybody's out there to prove that they are the man. You you fold in Desan McCullough. You fold in Crimson Missile Lewis Carter. You get Pachotti back healthy. You get a couple of these other freak in-betweeners like Taylor Heim and Taylor Wine. And it, it you eventually got to look at which one of these cars you want to drive. You yeah. can't drive them all at the same time. And yep. uh, so let's just go with this. Let's go with, uh, do you remember the point to where we had Baker, Kyler, and I think Austin Kendall at quarterback all at the same time, right? Like, yeah, what's the stuff you see on social media? You got you to gotta start one, bench one, and cut one. Mm-hmm. We're, we're getting there. We're getting into that deal to where it is absolutely that if, if Kanick makes the jump and we see Kanick look 80% of what Stutzman was last year. Jay, do you do you do you fully un, fully understand like what that means for this defense? Like we had one all-American linebacker going out there 
and we were we were stoked. Two, potentially three, four. Get a little LeBron, five, six. I don't know. You know, it's we. It, it's it's amazing. And then you match it in the corners, and you match it in the safeties, and you match it with potential on the defensive line. Guys, we're about to see us probably the best defense we've seen in 20 years plus. I can see that. This this feels like we're going into those late 2000s defense, right? This feels like a Brent Venables setup and build. Now we just got to watch them execute, which, again, I think we are. And, Mike, I'm with you here. I mean, we, we, we made you a believer. I could totally see it. Thank you. That is definitely what we're hoping to do. And I put it like this. I don't think can it starts next season. I think that your starting linebackers will be Stutzman and Kip Lewis. I think Kip Lewis is at that point where he's able to do it. So once you sub one out and you bring in a Canick, you bring in a McKenzie, you bring in a Lewis Carter, I do think we're going to go deeper in the linebacker rotation this year, this coming season, than we did last year. I do expect to see Lewis Carter play uh, with Kobe as well as Canick, uh, Stutzman, and um, – Kip, and then I think Desai McCullough is going to rotate between the two. So, Apache, to kind of answer your question here around specializing, well, their focus with him is still him being a cheetah, right? But they're letting him play at will. And he mentioned in, I think it was on the, one of the uh, Red, Dirt, uh, Red Dirt Media, uh, Red Dirt Rambles or whatever, with the players, and he mentioned he was like he feels a little bit more natural at the will. But that's also because, when he, like you said, Coop, when he was at Indiana – that's all he was doing. It was like, you know, you go out there and just go play. And so they had him at will, and he would come up on the edge, and the next thing you know, he's blitzing on a regular basis, owning dudes. And so the good thing, too, is the good thing is he's healthy. He mentioned he had to have knee surgery after Bedlam. Well, he had to have, he had two knee injuries, basically, because of chop blocks. And that's the problem you run into with someone with his size. So, Apache, to kind of point out what you're saying, the one problem you run into dudes with his measurables is everybody going to chop block him because they know he's a threat, right? He's a player that they have to key in on because they're like, dude, he's like six foot five. He may not be more than two. He's about 230, maybe 240, but he's fast and he's strong. And we've seen him snatch dudes up in the Big Ten. So you get a lot of chop blocks, you're going to start seeing a bunch. The injuries. And so he dealt with that last year, but that's the thing. The good thing is, is that we'll be able to go deeper into the to the rotation and everything. And so question here mentioned about uh Boganowski. Bogo's gonna be playing uh he's probably gonna be a cheetah. I sense he's a cheetah role. Um I think he's about a year year, maybe two years out before we really see him heavy on the field. But he may work his way up. I think they they, they I know they want to size him up, get him a little bit thicker, especially because they're gonna have him on a load. But Reggie Powers is already out there. I mean, they're trying to keep him from gaining more weight. He's already 205. Dude's not even 18 yet, Coop. Yeah. <laughs> He's not even 18. <laughs> think he turns 18 this summer. I think Pops mentioned he turns 18 this summer. When I saw that, like, that is dumb. That is going to be gone. So you'll have Bo- Boganowski with Powers building themselves up on the freshman secondary. It's going to be dumb. Billy Bowman out there. He hasn't practiced. He's coaching. Right now, because you know they're trying to keep him healthy. I ain't gonna say no more, Coop. It's gonna be fun. Jay, Defense is gonna be it. Jay, yeah, I mean, so I mean, if you just take a look, um, just on the defensive side. So we also haven't talked about uh, Devon Sears. Devon Sears is actually uh, starting to show that he might be a player on the defense too. And I, I, I listen, if you got six, seven dudes on the defensive line, you can you can really just dip into. That's good. That's good. Um, but you also got Caden Willard, who's starting to really get the uh, is really starting to get the, um, the you know the the oomph going on. And guys, I don't know what's going on with the mic, so I, I apologize. Uh, it's I, I, I'm potentially yelling at this point. It's never been this bad, so I don't I don't know what's going on. So catch this. It's just today. Uh, it's because I'm traveling. It's because I'm traveling. Yeah, That's probably. what it is. That's what it is. It's but, my fault. Um, Boganowski, Jaden Hardy, Eric McCarty. Reggie Powers, James Nesta, Taylor Heim, Taylor Wine, Danny Okoye, Nigel Smith. Guys, you hear these guys, and they could play one of three or four positions. So, that's never bad. And uh, and and I believe Boganowski's actually been on some of the films already. Um, he's going to be a guy, again, you got to try to find out where you put these guys who are you know, right in between a lot of different stuff because it's not that 
if you put him at safety, he's not going to be, you know, he's not going to go fulfill anything. It's just the fact that like you could put him at safety and he'd become all world. But what else do you got there? You could put him at an outside linebacker, but he could be all world. But who else you got there? Cheetah. Who else you got there? Like I said, I believe if Venables could play four nasty defensive linemen and seven cheetahs, he would do it. Oh, 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 in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. And the good thing, too, I know that Zach Alley, in some of his offenses, he does run like a three safety high, especially on passing downs. Yeah. Guaranteed passers. Man, imagine you, you have Robert Spears, Jennings, you're going to have Billy Bowen, you have Peyton Bowen out there together running that safety like that. And then when you once once you start to graduate people, you're going to have powers out there with Hardy. You get... I'm excited. But on from that, defensive-wise, I think it will be fine. It's, yeah. it's going to be a, the biggest thing with this defense. The best part is we're bringing back 78% of our production, high, number eight in the country, number one in the SEC. So bringing back that much production, we – should see the jump in the advanced metrics from the 30s where we are now up into the 10s, right? And we're definitely going to be getting some portal guys um, just to add additional depth, especially the defensive line. I expect at least two guys on the D-line that we're going to go after. Uh, Portal opens up in a week, uh, roughly. I'm pretty excited. I'm preparing myself to start dropping videos and just be talking about that nonstop because that's going to be huge. We're going to be definitely active in that BV kind of mentioned it. He kind of talked about it, but I I think that's going to be the play. So let's go offense. And then we're going to wrap up with this question from Keaton around four guys that we see hitting the portal after the spring game. That's a very interesting question. I've started. That is going to be the one we're going to talk about. PG, I'm about to kick you out of my stream. Um, If you say that name one more time, I will be kicking you out. Um, because this is the 8 millionth time we've heard that. Pops! Hold up. Pops Power just told us. Raise you up to 210. Raise you up to 210. Are you serious right now? He's up to 210 right now? They let him add weight? Bruh. Hold on. I'm going to... I'm going to, I'm going to ask somebody else on their weight real quick. And because, uh, I am very curious and you know who I might be texting. <laughs> I know exactly who you text him, but that is a, a, that's, that's, that's bananas. They let him get that big. That is huge. All right. Offense practice wise, man. Um, I told y'all that this player, the minute that we went after, we got him here, and he committed. I said it on a commitment video. Freshman All-American, dude's going to be nasty here. He may be the next great one out of the beaten bow school of uh, offensive linemen. That's for Beachy Weibo. Told y'all that. Told y'all that kid's going to be something. He's already turning heads. He looks like a leader out there. He is a freshman All-American. And... He's going to be a beast. And so, Coop, you mentioned this, you know, not having the quote-unquote veterans at the bookends to be able to teach the young guys. Totally get that. The good thing is, is Sexton knows. Playing in that, against, uh, what was that, uh, Florida State, and then, you know, getting injured, having to sit most of the season, but coming in and relieving Tyler Guyton when Guyton went out with the injury and then just finishing it up. Yeah, we got some good vets. So, I told y'all what my offensive line prediction was. And I've seen a couple of other folks put out their predictions from the insider space. And it sounds like I am basically spot on with your left tackle being big, sexy, your left guard being Heath Zeta, your center. Now, if if Everett makes it back him, but it's going to be Bates, I'm expecting it to be Bates. Your right guard is Fabichi Weiwu. Right tackle is the other Jake. Because they're saying that Jake Taylor is stepping up as well. I even I think I heard Gabe even make mention about, you know, he's he's raved about Weiwu the most. And he talked about how Ozeda has also the, – basically the interior of the offensive line, the concerns are going way down. Now it's all about these outside guys. But the problem is, too, those outside guys are also going up against some pretty darn good edges. Our defense will be our strength. So, 
So pass it to you, Coop, on the O-line and your thoughts. Before I do that, real quick to understand for everybody. Just because we say the D-line is out there killing it does not mean the offensive line is bad. Remember, when Brent Venables was head coach, I mean, Brent Venables was defensive coordinator and Kevin Wilson was the offensive coordinator. Kevin Wilson talked about before the Tulsa game that they had to physically move the ball up and down the field because they couldn't get past the defense. And that was the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback Sam Bradford and DeMarco Murray trying to play. We literally would shut down our own offense. Chess match. And Allie's going to start figuring out too. So, offensive line-wise, though, 100%, as Gabe had talked about on Oklahoma Breakdown, he's been raving about Weibu as well as Ozeda. Said they looked the part. And if that's the case, our offensive line is going against probably the best defensive line they're going to see in the SEC, or at least the best defense they're going to see. So keep your eyes on that one. Coop, go ahead, and then we'll, I'll jump in here and answer some of these questions. I, I think that I think I, I want to point something out because I think Kim is trying to get in your feels because I think Kim's asking about Omega Megwa. And hey, man, look, look, it, look, 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 Kim, look, don't, don't you do it. About, if you're asking about it, Jay, it's going to turn into a two hour long show. Because it will. he is a damn muscle <laughs> hamster. His knee was one of the worst injuries I think I've ever seen. I, I, I saw last two years ago, right after it all happened, the, uh, the report, and that was disgusting. Um, because, I mean, it, you tear your knee like that, the, the amount of surgeries that he had to go, to, go through, you have to relearn how to walk. You have to relearn how to do a lot of different things. I don't think Megwa is 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 a transfer portal person because nope, he ain't going nowhere. He hasn't showed anything. And oh no, let me let me let me let me rewind. Who was the uh, Miami running back? Uh, was it? Uh, oh, Willis McGahey. That was Willis McGahey. That McGahey. was the most disgusting McGahey. injury I've ever seen in my life. One I've ever seen. That Ed McCaffrey on Monday Night Football was pretty bad too, but that was a broken leg. Uh, but he was mm. wiggling around like one of those uh, you know janky car dealership balloon things. But anyway, yep. Um, so I, I, I'm going. I'm going Jacob Sexton as your left tackle. Jacob Sexton is going to have to be. He, he's going to. Need, he's going to need to make strides now, guys. Don't forget, he is out of football shape. He getting back from the knee. It, it is what it is. But I think that I think that that's going to be good because at worst he holds his own and he has moments of elite that he tosses out there. Um, I it, again, Ozeda the. I'm going to give Ozeda the fastest rising offensive lineman award just because I think once you've won a freshman yeah. all American, I think, you know, the kind of the, the shelf set for what you should be. Uh, but Ozeda is, is tearing point. it up. Shout out to mama Ozeda. Um, she is, uh, she, she, she's, she's phenomenal. So um, again, center, you're going to go with Bates and he's got to learn how to snap and he's got, he's got to, he's got to get better at pass block, pass protection. He is going to be good at run. Um, that that it is. I, I think he's going to be good at that. Um, so I know what Kim is talking about. So real quick, Kim, you're talking about not Oregon. It was Washington. You talking about Gary and Hatchet, and Hatchet still he's out with a knee injury. He's been out for he's been out since he got here, basically. So he's been rehabbing his. He got hurt, and so did his little brother Landon. In which Landon had knee surgery. I don't think Gary and had surgery. He just had an injury that he had basically has to rehab. So that's who you're talking about. And so, yeah, Sooner Cowboys, he was talking about the Washington transfer, which is Gary and Hatchet. He's not going to be ready to play until probably um, – I don't think he'll be back. Probably fall. They'll probably sit him till fall because we, we, we don't want to we, – we don't – if he's already hurt, go ahead and let him get healthy before – and then we, we'll talk – we'll, you know, get him up to speed in uh, the fall area. So I'm sensing that. That's who it was. Um, yeah, but Hatchet and Megwa both did come from Washington. Sooner Cowboys, you're correct. Poopty was thinking that was Megwa. I realized that when he said Oregon and he went to Washington, he's talking about the offensive line because I was talking about the interior, uh, who's here. But yeah, Hatchet hasn't got the practice yet. But he is going to be available. And he can play center also. That's the good thing. So depending on what's going on with Troy Everett, because he's having the surgery. He had the surgery last week, uh, this past week. And depending on how his rehab looks, 
we should be fine when it comes to what uh, the depth looks like. So continue, Coop, on the yeah. line. Yeah. So, I, guys, he came from USC. Let's not hold it against him because at Florida, <laughs> he was really good. And yeah, he was solid. As Tarkin boy, was solid. As, as our boy PG said, um, you know, you – as our boy PG, you can't get really good at what you're doing, doing, uh, you know, beach body, you know, yoga as strength and conditioning. That just won't work. So, um, Tarquin is starting to round into some shape too. And I think that that's great. Um, you know, talking to Michigan State fans, there's a lot of uh, sour grapes. Uh, but Spencer Brown um, is a guy that, um, I mean, he, he's, he's going to have to, I mean, he's going to have to get, I mean, he's going to have to get better. He, he's, you know, when we had Phil Lodeholt or Orlando Brown, um, guys like that, they were good. Uh, Trent Williams was also the same way. They're good for two holds a game, but they were yeah. also good for putting a dude 25 yards downfield, three rows into the stands multiple times a game. Spencer Brown ain't that guy. So you, you, you got to round that up. But again, if you have uh, Sexton and Taylor as your two bookends right now, guys, uh, we're, we're going to continue to keep on going. Yes, Phil out there at Colorado. But you guys just got to understand that we've got pieces and they're going against an absolute insane offensive line or defensive line. And they know what's about to be at ran. They know what's coming. It's not smoke and mirrors. It's not game prep. It's we've been running against these fools for years. So, I'll say this, my first offensive MVP, and guys, get ready. Because I don't know if a lot of Sooner fans know that there's this position on the field called tight end. And not H-back. That's that's what happens when you don't have a tight end. And yeah, Stogner, it's been a while. Because Stogner was a thin offensive tackle. But Bauer Sharp, guys, is... I mean, he is it. He, he, he's doing He's doing what he is supposed to be doing. You, you see all the plays that's going on. Guys, Bauer Sharp is going to be phenomenal. He is going to be phenomenal. He, you know, uh, so if you rewind, I believe it was Gabe and Teddy was talking about the uh, the last time when we had um, uh, Braden Willis at tight end and H, AKA H back. I mean, he had, you know, was it 40, 50 catches, 600 yards? That's, I mean, if we get 40 catches and 600 yards out of Bauer Sharp, I think we all go, this because Caden Helms is healthy and now he gets to start practicing again. You're seeing Roberts who is not healthy yet. He'll be on the field soon. I think he's going to be that second tight end. Um, you got uh, Fanuel who still is learning how to play football, but he's great. You got Devon Mitchell, Natural athlete. Seven, Devon Mitchell who's 17 and should be getting ready for his senior year coming up, but he's here. So, we're going to have a tight end room and it's going to continue to get better because with who we could potentially bring in in the 25 class guys, we're catching up pretty quick on the tight end side. So um, we are, but you're also when, when you see a tight end like Bauer sharp, when you see guys going over the middle where that helps out is where, uh, who I want to just go ahead and call it. it I'm, I'm about to call my shot. This is uh Jay didn't know this was coming, but guys, Jaden Gibson is loading for an, for an amazing season. We'll get to the wide receivers in just a minute. But real quick, I want to answer this question. You asked the question, Thunder, uh, oh, you sooner. What's good? How big is Bauer Sharp? So I'm going to go ahead and give you all some measurables real quick on our tight ends. You ready? Bauer Sharp walks in the door uh, on the roster at six foot four, 250 pounds. I know, right? It's pretty darn good. Six foot four, 250. Devon Mitchell showed up on campus as a 17 year old 17 i keep mind you six foot three 255 pounds uh frampton uh he's, fay he's down hampton fay and he's down hampton fay the other quarterback he transferred here from michigan state he plays tight end as well six foot five 247 pounds uh caden helms his hammy is what's bothering him now but it looks like he's starting to get healthy uh, his knee's not bothering him. It's just a separate hammy. And BB said he expect him to be good to go spring ball. Caden Helms is measuring at six foot five, two hundred forty pounds right now. Six five, two forty, right? Josh Fanuel 
is sitting here as we're getting excited about tight ends. He's 6'3", 243. Dog, just about all our tight ends are over 240 pounds. Oh, let me add you another one real quick, right? One that we probably didn't think about, Kate McIntyre, right? Good old McIntyre coming to us from Nebraska. He's 6'3". He's 221 right now, but he looks good, right? He's looking solid. Monty, what's Gucci, my guy? Thank you for pulling up. What up, Monty? We ain't seen Monty in a cool minute. What's good? But Bauer's big. He's 250. He's measuring it at 250, man. He's bringing it. And he's fluid. Yes, Kim, point this out. The dude runs routes so freaking smooth. Like, the, and so as Coop jokes about it, I mean, he's joking while being serious. I mean, y'all ain't seen a tight end in a while. We get, we got him. We, we, uh, 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 Joe John Finley's got nothing to work with. And the recruiting here is continuing. I mean, and you know who I didn't talk about who's hurt right now? Jake Roberts. I ain't mentioned yeah. Jake's name. Jake Roberts coming here at 6'4", 251 pounds. Dog, everybody's over 240 except for McIntyre. Yeah. and Cool. What, and what, what, what do we do? It's, I mean, like you said, you know, I don't know if we are, uh, we're, we're, we're tossing out um, that stuff like, uh, oh, uh, Bowers, Brock Bowers from Georgia. That guy's a freak of nature. But um, Bower Sharp is going to turn some heads. He's going to absolutely turn some heads. And what I like at this, 100%, why I like this the most, Devon Mitchell is going to be an All-American tight end. He needs yeah, he's to there. Be in the pra- he, he needs to be here and needs to get himself acclimated at his own pace. He doesn't need to be counted on this year. So, if you don't see more than 15 to 25 catches out of Devon Mitchell this year, that's still a lot more than most of our, I mean, how many, what is our second tight end in catches since, I mean, since we became fans? We've never. It's probably probably since like Mark Andrews, right? Mark Andrews era. I don't think we had multiple. Actually, Mark Andrews probably was the closest that had multiple. I think who was with them. But yeah, we haven't really had it. And then, oh, I forgot one more, guys. My bad. My bad. I forgot one more. Hayden Bray. The Red Sir Jr. He's been a tight end here for a bit. He's 6'4", 267. And then, so you couple that with these guys. They got to get better at the pass blocking. They got to get better at some of that stuff. But at, at catching the football, they got it. So you take all those six, what I heard, 6'4", 6'4", 6'5", and then you toss in, uh, I don't know, let's throw a couple of 6'4", uh, 6'5", six, six, receivers on top of them. Oh. And and then and and then let's just go ahead and I don't know have a couple guys who you know running four three four four slot receiver types guys. <laughs> it, if the offensive line is good, this team can be a threat. If the offensive line is very good, quick, this team can be a threat. Good, very quick. Not not great. And when I say threat, I mean like a player for the for the national championship. It, it, that's where it is. Now, guys, we're not running RPO heavy like we did last year. So that's going to help our offensive line quite a bit. Um, we are going to not do as much hurry up, which is going to help, again, the offensive line a little bit more. We can do a lot of a lot of rollouts, and you, you saw some of the practice notes that that's what had been going on here recently is they were doing a lot of rollouts and, and moving the pocket for Jackson. And a lot of quarterback run game. I promise you, if you ever want to load, lighten up a pass rush, quarterback run game and play action pass, that's it. But you got to run the ball. So you get down and you go, all right, here we go. Let's get an absolute just, you know, defying run game. Put those offensive linemen, give them one goal. Our goal is to run the ball first and foremost. Let's go. Um, also the air raid components of that Jay is you got, uh, they're going to get the ball out of their hands pretty quick. And yep. so with that air raid, you guys got to remember, I mean, it's been a while since we've been around the air raid. Um, you know, it feels like and it's only been three years. Um, but when you roll out the uh, levy offense, there's, it, it's just so much different. So I, I fully believe that we don't need to freak out about this offensive line anymore at this point. Uh, yeah, no. Nah. You've got one of the world's best offensive line coaches. Everything else around them is is not only performing but ex- excelling. And so, I mean, if we're returning a good offensive line right now, Jay, 
there, there's none of us sitting here not talking about the national championship. Yeah, we, I, I, 25 was the year that I was expecting us to really be competing. That gives Jackson Arnold about a year and a half of, of experience to play. All right, so but going from there, make sure you hop in the comments, hit the like button. Uh, hop in the comments. Let me know who's coming to the spring game. I'm going to ask y'all this every week, so make sure you be prepared to put it in there if you're going. I'm going to be there. Who's going to be at the spring game? I want to know who's going to be there so that we can uh, make sure that we you know, at least shake hands and toast a beer together or whatnot. I plan on hanging out in Norman the entire day. So let us know if you're going to be at the spring game. We want to know. Uh, we, we can find a spot to kind of all link up. We'll figure that out the Sunday, actually the Wednesday before spring game. I know uh, we, we can talk about it. So, yes, it's beautiful to see some of y'all going to be there. This will be my first one in a while. I usually like to sit at home and watch it so that I can record and jump right back on and then, you know, hop on live and talk about it right afterwards. This year I said, nah, we're going to the SEC. I need to be boots on the ground recording stuff, boots on the ground. So we'll be down there hanging out. Could be talked about wide receiver room, man. And, you know, not to keep everybody for too much longer, but um, because we're already about to hit up about this on this hour. But I want to say this. Keaton had this great question. This was earlier. Said I was going to start, and I did. Portal guys, who do we think is going to hit the portal? And Keaton, I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to be honest, straightforward, and be 100% straight to you. And we'll answer this one afterwards about the record. But be honest. I don't see anyone of, of the last – Three recruiting classes in the portal. I don't see it. And I only say that because I think a lot of the guys that on scholarship that we've brought in want to see what this really looks like after being in this system. It feels like they're selling depth, doing whatever they can in IL to take care of people. Because that, because the big thing with the NIL here is, and I think this is kind of the misconception of us being quote unquote broke, is that even Venables mentioned they do a lot of spreading it out, spreading the wealth among the team. They try to make everybody feel comfortable and happy or whatnot. Of course, your more stars guys will probably get other deals and endorsements and stuff, but for the most part, they're spreading it to get everybody comfortable. Now, from that piece, I don't see anybody leaving this time around. Um, I did have like six people on my list of people that I anticipated going, but I think honestly, I don't think we see anybody portal until after next season. I think next season, I'll probably have a long, I have a list of people that will end up portaling um, after we go through a year in the SEC. But I think the rest of these guys actually want to see what it looks like, right? And they actually understand that health is a very real factor when you go to the SEC. Health is critical because. It's a good chance if you you didn't you didn't get starting job this time okay but there's a good chance you're uh you're, you're the guy in front of you he he may get a stinger and you got to go in more often than you expect there may be a lot of dudes splitting a lot of time and it's not because of bad play or anything it could be could be health wise now are we getting anybody in the portal absolutely we will be going after some offensive linemen we need some more o linemen we need to get get some more because of health right we'll probably get at least two um probably interior offensive linemen to add depth. And I sense that we'll go for two interior defensive linemen uh, just to, to add to that. So because on the defense side, we picked up edge in uh, Caden Woolard, who's a monster, a monster. Um, no, see space commander. That is very much incorrect. So you would think we would have to get guys to portal because we had too many scholarships players but guess what we also have we have nil plus baby all you gotta do is throw some of these dudes on nil and let the uh let the nil pay for it and a lot of these dudes are willing to take it you probably would especially do that with your grad guys if you put your grad guys on nil plus let the nil pay for their graduate school which is of course cheaper than it is for your undergrad they're good housing's taken care of tuition's taken care of yeah, because grad guys ain't taking many, as many classes anyway as the undergrads. Yeah, that's the thing you got to remember. So a lot of these guys, the numbers are not numbers aren't real anymore. Just keep that eighty five is the number 
it ain't real. You're going to see a whole bunch of dudes getting uh, getting a NIL plus deal where we're paying for their school without them being, you know, taking up a scholarship spot. Remember that. That's the thing about it. So, yes, people are going to shift up and down. That don't mean they're going to leave. The school's still pay for and they still get money on NIL. I think they're going to be good. So we've got that taken care of. Uh, but we've built that, as Hank mentioned, we built, we're building a culture that a lot of these people want to stick around. So, Coop, everybody's asking this question. We get it every show. Record. As we go through practices each week, I ask myself, did my numbers go up or down? I still have us. I'm not even going to give you a floor or ceiling. I'm just going to give you a number. 10 and 2. I won't tell you who we won, who we're going to beat, or who we're going to lose to. I'm going to say 10 and 2. And we will get more of a – we'll dissect this more right before the season. I'll give you a final prediction of what the record is. We'll both will, as well as who we lose to and who we beat. We'll do that in, in the fall. But as of right now, I'm going to say 10 and 2. Coop, who you got? What you got? Yeah, I mean, I got 10 and 2 also. I just think that – um, I, I think that the offensive line and full force, I, I believe in Jackson. I believe in the defense. I believe in the skill positions. So that leaves my offensive line. So I, I just got to look at facts. We have a very good offensive line coach. We have very good offensive staff that can help us around some offensive line turmoil. I think we go 10 and two. I think that again, we are sitting here at the end of the season and you're sitting there staring at, 10 and 2 and wondering damn if we could have just done that we would have been 11 and 1. Guys, like that that's that's where we hover. Like don't let the year 1 of Brent Venables don't let that get in the way because with that one out of the way it's it's not. But yeah, I it's for for every single bit of excitement that Texas is getting, I, I'm all for it. Let them have all the excitement because I do not I don't understand how you use every single bit of productivity and leave yourself with a confusing quarterback and all of a sudden feel like you're going to repeat your, you know, uh, uh, once in a lifetime season you had last year. Like Texas overachieved last year. Mm -hmm. It just, it, they, it, they overachieved. I don't understand how you could sit there and say Texas is ready to go SEC style when their lackluster defense loses all, all their playmakers. Uh, and uh, I don't know, they're getting DWIs right now too. Um, but then you also lose all of your offensive skill positions. Like that just doesn't make sense. You take away your best defenders, your offensive skill positions, and you're going to do the same thing you did the year before, which you've never done in the past 20. Like what? So guys, 10 and two is it. And I think that again, at the end of the year, we're sitting here wondering if we would adjust X, Y, Z, we'd be 11 and one. Yep. And that's the thing, too. Um, I scheduled last year, man. I mean, I know, you know, we, we were upset about those losses. I am, too. A little, you know, completely perturbed about it. But I went and looked at um, who we played against last year. And um, did y'all know that, going back to the Big 12, we played against one... Let me see. Um, let me see. Who is this? Iowa State finished what seven and so we beat seven and six. Iowa State, Kansas finished nine and four. Uh, West Virginia finished nine and four, and we beat them. We lost to a nine and four Kansas. Uh, we lost to a ten and four Oklahoma State. Um, like we didn't. All of our the teams were, you know, double digit wins, similar to Texas, right? They just ran through the conference a little bit better than we did. Unfortunately, our losses came in conference. Theirs came out of two, one in conference, one out of conference. But we didn't lose to like scrubs. Yeah. Right? But losing to any Big 12 team sucks. Period. I get that. I'm 100% in that camp. I just like to remind people that we just didn't lose to scrubs, though. Like they, they just weren't god awful. If we were lost to Cincinnati, then maybe, yeah, I probably would have lost my mind. 10-4 and, and 9-4, and two teams we lost to. Not bad. Yeah. If you're going to lose anybody, lose teams with like 9 or 10 win seasons, right? 
Um, the six and seven season Sooner Cowboy, you're right. But we also had to go through and do a lot of cleanup. And that's the thing I appreciated about Venables and them is that they didn't take any shortcuts. They basically said, no, we need to clean up what we're doing here. And so sometimes sucks. I mean, you lose five games to like a score or less, but yeah, you could have you could have won those. We bounce back. That's what's most important. And so, yeah, I'm proud of what we did. I'm proud of where we're going. There's a lot of great things coming down the line. We've got a lot of commitments coming up. Uh, last thing before we wrap up, I want to talk to some of these offensive guys in practice again. Um, running back, hey, man, Javante Barnes sounds like he's back there. But Caleb Hicks, be prepared. Be prepared. Caleb Hicks, man, he's making noise. Uh, my boy Megwa is starting to get some touches and that knee's starting to look better, even though he's suing University of Washington right now, which is a very interesting thing that's going on with that. But guess what? Caleb Hicks is doing something cool. What you hear about Hicks, man? I know you've heard some. Hicks sound like he's getting special. Buy some stock, guys. Buy he, some stock. He, guys, Caleb Hicks is when you had uh Perry on Winfrey walk off the bus. You looked at him and you thought, damn, like that's not guy that I want to mess with. And nope. you're, oh, they're starting defensive tackle. That's exciting. But Perry on Winfrey, uh, I mean, ask anybody besides Brock Purdy, Perry on Winfrey <sighs> never, never fully reached what he was supposed to. Um, Caleb Hicks last year, you know, they used to say that when you, when you saw AD or Smosh P Ryan, like, you're like, oh, what? Whose dad is that? And they're like, oh, that's an 18 year old boy. Oh, sh- shit. Okay, okay, that's crazy. Wait, well, that's now- a dad? Oh, what? That's a player? <laughs> yeah. And so now, Caleb Hicks last year looked like that. This year, he looks even better. And I think that running the ball, he's got the top end speed. He's got, he's got the he's a one cut guy. He guys. Caleb Hicks is going to be one of those ones where we're like, how the hell did we not think about him? Because, man, then remember, when Samaja P. Ryan committed, I don't remember freaking out about Samaja P. Ryan. I don't remember too many people getting excited. It was like, oh, yeah, cool. he's, he's, he's coming too. So Caleb Hicks, um, you know, we go in a lot more. And, you know, if he turns out to be a baller, I mean, he was a very, very, very loyal person. And, um, and so uh, him showing up, he is going to be a stud. Uh, it sounds like, it sounds like you go Sawchuck Barnes Hicks, um, mm-hmm. and those last two are uh, you know two A and two B, um, and then you still got guys behind him that are also studs too. So, yeah, it was uh, yeah hundred percent. It was Mixon that had all the hype with that. But I mean, I'm still saying like I was still I'm still excited about Xavier Robinson just because I think he could be a Derrick Henry clone. Um, now Derrick Henry is one of a kind type of dude, but that's that's the that's the comp. So. Um, Hicks is balling. He is learning the game. He is learning how to be a football player instead of a runner. And that's that's great. He they're the running backs are getting a lot of balls out of the backfield, which was a completely almost forgotten about part because bringing up Mixon, how many times did we throw swing passes to Mixon and just watch him run for 30 40? I mean, shit, if you're playing Texas Tech again, Mixon might be the all time college receiver, uh, leading receiver if we play Texas Tech three or four <laughs> times a year, but. He, he could catch easy. the ball uh, in the backfield. And he was a stud. Caleb Hicks looks like this. So um, we'll just say this is if our offensive line can run block, we got we got some running to do. Right, right. And then we can't forget about Sam Franklin, you know, the um he's a running back. Like he understands how to play the game as a running back. And I heard that he's doing well. Hicks is standing out again. We just need to get him some carries. Barnes is healthy, and he's healthy. That's all that matters is he's healthy. Like and Even Barnes said it himself that he wasn't healthy last season, and it showed. It showed on the field. I think he gets his head back into the game, and he does it. So, I don't know. Coop, there's so much more we can dive into, but we've got this week of practice that we got to wait for all the notes to come out. Of course, Venables is going to do what he does best. He's going to let the um, he's going to let our people in 
for, you know, let, 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 the, let the people in to watch the practice, which is going to be even more exciting. He's going to let them in. So we'll get that. We'll get all of the uh, beat writers talking about it. So the beat writers will be in there. They're going to give us the notes. It's going to be a great week. Keep your eyes open for that. I'm expecting commitments this week. Um, I'm hoping we get three, maybe four, leading us all the way up into the spring game. And I expect a, a I expect a commitment at spring game too. This will be the earliest that we'll be we'll be going. I'm just going to warn y'all now. 25, the 26th class will not be having commitments this early. We don't typically do this. We because once we you commit, we want you to be done. And a lot of these kids want to enjoy the process. And unless you find a dude that don't want to enjoy the process, he's like, nope, I'm Gucci. Then we're solid. I don't expect, but I expect a very nice Wednesday with you all. So wrap this up. Coop, final thoughts, then we can get on up out of here. Well, um, I don't believe that aliens are coming, and I don't believe the rapture is happening tomorrow, but uh, don't forget about that eclipse. Get out there, see that bad boy, because, I mean, it's a cool thing. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm excited about uh, this season, guys. Like, the you look – I mean, it, it, at this point, everybody's really, really excited, right? But yep. I, I'm trying not, trying not to be a homer. The undeniables are the offensive weapons are silly. The defense experience is silly. The new the new people that we're folding in, that's silly. Our offensive line, trust the process with Beatenbow, and trust the fact that we've got a coaching staff who knows what we're going to have to get through. None of them want to show up and get punked in the SEC year one either. That, it, it, no, it, we don't want that. Uh, we're all going to have massive reactions in, in two weeks when Chapman McNown runs for like 185 yards in the spring game. So, you know, keep, don't, don't forget, there's always a receiver and a, and a running back who n- will never see the field at OU who balls out. And so, uh, you know, I expect that to happen. Um, but go there. Be, be there. Be, have fun. We're going to have, t- uh, you know, if you can make it to the spring game, get out there because we're going to have people there. We're going to have recruits. And we got to sh- – I mean, this is SEC. This is SEC football from this point on. There's no more Big 12. It is over. Uh, you know, we are in the SEC starting now. Um, so this will be our technically our first SEC football event. Oh yeah! Oh man! Uh, it feel it feels so exciting to say that, right? Feels so exciting, right? Um, oh, you, we're gonna get some really good news this week, so I'm not concerned about that. Yeah, after losing softball, that hurts. The girls will be fine, though. I think that they'll bounce back and figure out next season. But yeah. We're going to have some fun. So, all right. Thank you all for pulling up as usual. Sorry, Coops. Mike was acting weird. It's it's on me. I'm traveling. So everything is kind of weird because of that. But we'll be back. Uh, Probably won't go Wednesday, maybe Thursday instead. Uh, Or we'll just push it to the weekend. We'll just see what happens. Um, And, yeah, hopefully we get some commitments to be able to really talk about it deep. So make sure y'all hop in the comments and let us know y'all thoughts. We've asked some questions throughout the entire show. Make sure you... You give us some of those replies. Like, share, rate, review. If you're listening, if it's five stars, I don't think we deserve it. Give us five anyway. And with that, Coop and I will chop it up with every single one of y'all. What? Uh, what are we going to say? Later. I don't know. Sometime later. We're going to go with, we're just going to go with later. Is that what we're going to do? I guess we could just say later. All right.